What if instead of waiting for someone to donate a kidney for a life-saving transplant, you could just have one printed? Well, believe it or not, that's the future of health. Hello everyone, I'm Robin Roberts. You've no doubt heard of 3D graphics, 3D movies, maybe even worn a pair of those 3D glasses. But as you're about to see, cutting edge 3D printing is reshaping medicine and transforming lives. Meet Aria. Like many five-year-old girls, she loves riding her bike, building Lego castles, and... Frozen? Yes! There you go. That's right the movie Frozen. Maybe part of it is that she's different. She's not like all the other, you know, princesses and queens. She's struggling with something. Like Queen Elsa, Arya also struggles with something. She was born without most of her right hand. Arya calls it her lucky fin. And if somebody asks her, she'll say, oh, that's my lucky fin. And then she yeah. moves on. A can-do attitude and improvising have been the keys to Arya's success a financial necessity for her parents because other options, such as a prosthetic hand, can cost up to $50,000, and insurance does not always cover it. And since children, like Aria, need a refitting at every growth spurt, it's, well, it's just not affordable. But all that is about to change. Thanks to a group of eighth graders and their teacher more than 2,000 miles away at Deer Creek Intermediate School in Wisconsin. So it was at 4%. Right now we're actually working on uh, making a hand for a girl in California named Aria. They know exactly what Aria needs. It's a mechanical movement. As she moves her wrist, fingers will come in and close. And so shaking a hand, hugging someone, holding onto some small objects, things that she wasn't able to do prior to this. Peter Graven heads up the robotics program, inspiring these young scientists to participate in a project run by Enabling the Future which matches schools that have 3D printers with children in need of prosthetics. We call it the Hand Project. It's a group of 15 students, 13 girls, two boys. They come during the lunch hour. Inspired to help design, print, and assemble Aria's new hand. We thought that to make the hand extra special for her, we would give it a Frozen design. So we have um, the Frozen logo, we have Queen Aria, and we have snowflakes spread around the hand. Yeah, sure, the 3D printer is kind of cool, but I think overall they'd be like, number one on their list is the fact that they're giving something to someone in need. Which is, after all, the great motivator beneath all innovations, making a difference, and explains why this class project for Peter Graven is a lifetime project for Dr. Anthony Atala, a trailblazer in the field of regenerative medicine. This is an image of a real ear. We can reconstruct exactly what this ear is going to look like once it's, it gets printed. Here at Wake Forest Institute of Regenerative Medicine in North Carolina, the 3D printers are a lot more sophisticated than anything you've seen before, and so are the objectives. We basically use what looks like your typical printer, and instead of using ink, we're using cells. And basically you're printing this one layer at a time. If you think that sounds like science fiction come to life, just wait. Dr. Atala is now using 3D printing technology in ways you could never have imagined. The goal of our institute is really to use all these printing technologies to basically achieve printable organs that we can put into patients. A mission he's determined to achieve, beginning with his body on a chip project. Look closely, these beating cells are ready to be printed into a tiny heart. It's hard to tell at first glance, but Dr. Atala is actually printing tiny organs, kept alive by a machine that functions like a body. What we do is we use that technology to sense how these organs will do when you put drugs into them. Then, for Dr. Atala's goal to one day print full-size tissues and organs, there are the 3D printed scaffolds, intended to hold the shape of ears, kidneys, and bones as they develop inside the body. So the scaffolds that we put in are designed to totally go away on their own over time while the cells take over and create a new tissue. With hundreds of thousands of people in the U.S. alone waiting for an organ transplant, Dr. Atala hopes these bioprinting projects will eventually save lives. 
Dr. Atala's lab, what's going on there? What are your thoughts about yeah. it? I mean, we're really just in the infancy of where 3D printing is going to take us. We're talking five or more years before we can start doing the first experimental procedures with humans and 3D printed organs and tissues. When we can start printing tissues and organs, it's going to transform transplant surgery, making the organ shortage that you hear so much about today really a thing of the past. But right now, what once seemed impossible for this family has arrived in the form of a gift from an eighth grade class. Wow. Who literally wanted to give a helping hand to a little girl. Yes, you want to try it on? Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. The lucky thing. There you go. <gasps> Are you moving it? With this hand, it's unlimited possibilities. As a parent, it just, just makes you happy. And you just want everything for your children. And you just want to give them the world. Ah. Too strong. <laughs>